Hi everyone, my name is Ryan from Avatar Aquatics and welcome to my video on breeding a mono shrimp. In this part one video, you're gonna see a lot of information. In the top right corner, you're gonna see either an F, which stands for fresh water, or you're gonna see an S, which is salt water, because a mono shrimp actually spend their lives going back and forth, fresh to salt to fresh again. So we're gonna tell you exactly what kind of water that they're currently in. So let's get started with step one, trying to tell the difference between male Amano shrimps and females. This is a young, mature female shrimp that's ready to lay eggs. You can see that there are stripes that run laterally down her body, and these come in the little dashes and dots. In a mature shrimp, this is what you'll see. However, in an immature female shrimp, they will all be dots, just like a mature male shrimp. She also has thicker bodies, as well as an ivory stripe that runs down the length of her back. Now, darker males may also have this, but it'll be very, very faint. Overall, she has a bigger body size and is a little bit more colorful. Now, every time she molts, when she is mature, she has the opportunity to lay eggs. During this time, she'll hide, mate with the male, and then release her eggs onto her pleopods, which are her little swimmerette feet down underneath her abdomen. As you can see here, this is her buried, and she actually is about two inches at this time. A mature male is much smaller at an inch and a half, less colorful, and also have these regular dots down the length of its body. Now, if you are confused, I've gone ahead and put in an overlay of both males and females to give you a better comparison side by side. You can always buy five to six shrimp at a time and hopefully you'll get both males and females. Once you have a female that is buried, it's time to prepare for the next step. As soon as you see the buried female, you can prepare the true seawater. Now this came from the ocean with little diatoms and algae inside which will be used to feed our little baby shrimps and if you don't you can always substitute with phytoplankton that you order online or go to your local fish store and ask for some tank water. The important thing is to make sure it doesn't overheat so put it in the shade and to measure the salinity with a refractometer so any rain or evaporation doesn't change it too much. The important thing is we grow enough algae or diatoms at this point. This next step may take a couple of tries to get right. A female shrimp will stay buried from two to five weeks depending on temperature and growing conditions. We must remove her into a separate container before that so that when she kicks her eggs, we are able to catch all of the larvae. You can see that on the bottom you are still some unhatched eggs and this was due to stress of putting her into a new container. It's very important that if this happens, put in an air stone to make sure there's enough water circulation. Under the microscope, these eggs are fertile. You can see the eyes and the developing embryo, as well as one that's about to hatch out on the bottom. In fact, in this 100 times magnification, you can see that the eggs and this larvae is still alive. So you can remove this manually as they hatch out with a pipette, but it's still a lot more work than if we don't stress out the female and let her lay the eggs naturally. Regardless of whether the female drops the larvae herself or you have to manually hatch it, Soon you'll see these little tiny floating specks, the larvae, in the freshwater and they must be moved to salt water as soon as possible. The best thing to do right now is to use a flashlight, put it next to the tank and pipette out all of the larvae as carefully as possible into a separate cup. For this particular batch, because the eggs were hatched artificially, I had to do this three times a day for the next week and a half to ensure that all of the eggs that hatched are able to be moved into salt water separately. You can't put the eggs into the salt water as a sort of shortcut. I recommend putting them in a cup with enough size and volume that you can put both salt water and acclimate them as well as the fresh water that they were originally in. In this video, I'm actually sucking out extra fresh water so that I have room to put in the salt water. 
Now, acclimation should happen as soon as they hatch, ideally. And the ratio of salt water to fresh water is one to one. You want this to happen in a span of at most three to five minutes. In fact, one time I put them into the acclimation container with half and half fresh water and salt water. I went to take a nap and then when I came downstairs again, they were all dead. So they shouldn't stay in brackish water. It should be fresh water, a three minute acclimation, and then fully into the salt water. You can always just dump the acclimation brackish water into the salt water if your volume is large enough and then measure the salt water in the end to make sure that it's still at 36 to 35 PPT. If acclimation goes well, you're going to see a ton of little baby Amano shrimps whenever you hold a flashlight up to the side of the tank because they exhibit phototaxis. During this time, it's so important that you subscribe to me so you can get part two of this video series and I'll also go ahead and post it in the description below as soon as it comes out. At this point, you want to make sure that you turn on the light enough so that you keep growing that good algae for them to eat. They can graze off the side and the bottom so it doesn't have to have algae suspended in the water column. If you have too much algae and the screen and everything is dark and covered, consider turning off the light. Now the algae that you see in this video I would say is about perfect. There's enough on the bottom and enough on the sides that there's enough food. However, there's not too much that the water is getting green or cloudy or brown or whatever. I like to keep this sponge filter in there so that there's enough water flow and water filtration that I don't have to keep doing water changes. However, you also have to remember that sometimes adding too much fresh water or having too much evaporation will change your salinity. So use a refractometer and check everything out. In this zoom up, you will also see these little bubbles and that's the oxygen from the algae photosynthesizing. So that's actually something that we want to see. That means that the algae is happy, there's enough light in return, your little baby shrimps are well fed and happy too. So let me show you my full setup here. Right next to the salt water, I have this original shoebox container that I put the female shrimp in to let her lay her eggs. As you can see, there's a bubbler going really, really fast here. And inside you can see the eggs that she kicked out prematurely. So every day, as soon as I come down from my bedroom, I go ahead and pipette out all of the hatched babies into that cup to acclimate and then every lunch and right before bed, I do the same thing. So three times a day, I acclimate newly hatched shrimp. Now, in order to keep that sponge filter going as low as possible so that the babies don't get sucked in, I tie a knot on the airline so that I can adjust the tightness of the knot and in return, the how much flow of air goes through. Overall, this is what you'll be doing for the next couple of weeks. In terms of feeding, you don't really need to feed if you have enough algae. However, you can add a little bit of yeast drops. Basically, just take the yeast, mix it with salt water from the tank, and then drip it in. Now, make sure you don't overfeed because that's going to foul the water. And in such a small amount of water, it's going to have really bad impact on this ecosystem. You can count the amount of babies that you have if you put a flashlight next to the container. And I really recommend that you take as many videos and pictures and post as many as you can because we really don't have enough uh, information out there for the hobbyist who wants to hatch a mono shrimps. With that being said, let me share some of my favorite videos that I took from this time. This is at a hundred times magnification, one week old, and you can already see that light yellow line running down the length of its body, and that's the things that it's been eating and digesting. Now, the way some of these things focus is that things that are closer will be out of focus, unfortunately, so you're not going to get a really good picture. However, in this one day shot at 40 times magnification, it's a little bit smaller and you can see everything very, very clearly. 
What's cool about this is that you can actually see them, them swimming backwards the entire time. They sort of just shimmy backwards and I think it's really, really cool. In this shot, I actually shined a flashlight over the slide as well as kept the light from under so that you can see color as well as black and white detail. And that was the coolest thing ever. You can see the different eyes on its head. You can see the heart beating and you know, it's just really, really cool at this point. Here's a comparison between the first day and the first week at the end of the first week. And you can see all the details that it's been growing during this time. And this shot was done by turning off the light from underneath the microscope and keeping the flashlight on so that instead of all of that white background, we can have a black background and see all the shiny details that it has on the surface of its body. Lastly, this was one of my favorite shots. Pay attention to the little specks in the water as it swims because you can see using the circular motion of the specks around it, which direction it swims in. So if you see those little black dots next to it circulating, you can see that it actually pushes itself towards the right of this video. And it's kind of like wheels turning. I thought it was really, really cool. So if you've liked it, please be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe, share it with whoever you want so that we can have more people know how to keep a mono shrimp. Here is a complete list of the materials and water parameters as promised. And this will also be in the description below if you want to see.